Nicholas is earning his degree in business marketing. While he was studying, he also worked as an English tutor for three semesters. He'll be transferring to UMUC to pursue a double major in business administration and cybersecurity with a minor in finance. No small feat that. Mr. Taylor, would you please join, join me on the stage? Hello, class of 2018. I would like to take a second to acknowledge President Phillips and the Harvard Community College Board and the distinguished faculty and staff. It is an honor and a privilege to be here at APG FCU Arena alongside my fellow honorees, special guests, all gathered here today. But most of all, it's an honor to be here with you all, the class of 2018. Before I begin, I would like to give a personal thank you to my friends and family. Without you guys, I would not be the person I am today. With every moment in life comes the ability to learn and grow, and I would like to take this opportunity to share some of the more difficult lessons that I've learned over the past few years. One of the more recent examples has been learning to not rush my life by living on someone else's timeline. After I graduated high school, my plan was to earn my associate's degree in two years and transfer to a four-year college. But life, as it tends to do, got in the way. And at the age of 18, I got my first real job as a personal banker. Through hard work and a little help from the man who hired me, who later became my mentor and best friend, I became the number one banker in the company. This promoted me to begin developing my own definition of success. After three years of working there, I decided to take a step back and work part-time so I could really focus on my schooling here at HCC. After three years of professional success, leading me to believe I was ahead of schedule, I quickly realized that I wasn't ahead or behind, but I was exactly where I was supposed to be according to my own timeline. In my years at HCC, I've learned invaluable lessons that have shaped me as a person in my everyday life and my career. From Professor Huddleston giving me a deeper knowledge of business, to Professor Linda Heil giving me the constructive criticism I needed to push myself to become the best writer I could possibly be, to Professor Stifler, who was kind enough to nominate me for this honor to speak here today. I have made connections at HCC that will benefit me for years to come. My path has not been direct, my path has been filled with obstacles, but it has taught me lessons that I believe are crucial to living a life for me and by me. What I'm trying to say is, earning a degree is an immense accomplishment regardless of age. Getting married is always beautiful no matter the circumstances. Starting a family later in life is still a wonderful experience, and buying a house is an awesome achievement, even if it takes decades to save up for it. We must never let societal expectations dictate our self-worth or in any way diminish from our accomplishments. Life is too short to try and limit on schedule. We need to have fun, fall in love, cry when it hurts, and laugh when it's funny. We must live our lives on our own terms and at our own pace. Because after all, there's only one person we're guaranteed to spend the rest of our lives with, ourselves. Samuel L. Jackson once said, you're never too old to move forward and make the rest of your life the very best of your life. He said this at the age of 52 after receiving his first offer to star in a motion picture. Billionaire tech mogul Mark Cuban was a bartender at 25. It took until 32 for J.K. Rowling to be, perched, to be published by, for the Harry Potter series after being rejected by multiple publishers. And Steve Carell only got his big break after 40 years old. Don't let society rush us with their timeline. Because as Einstein said, not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that's counted truly counts. As humans, we have a miraculous gift. The gift to build our lives and from the ground up in the manner that we see fit. Success does not limit itself to an age, a lifestyle, a gender, or race. It frees itself to be found by anyone at any time. Success is one of the most subjective words in the English language. Even the Oxford Dictionary couldn't develop a more specific definition than achieving the desired aim or result. There are many who measure success by the number of zeros in their salary. For some, this leads to a lifetime of happiness. But there is so much more to success than one's net worth. Truth is that one's worth is not based on any monetary value, but by the effect that you have on others. As Maya Angelou said, I have learned that people will forget what you said, will forget what you did, but will not forget how you made them feel. The point I'm trying to make is, is that success is whatever you make it. Perhaps it is getting into a particular degree program, or getting a promotion at work, or even starting a family. Do not compare your success to someone else's. We all have different definitions and expectations of the word. We need to be happy with where we are in life, and as challenging as that is on some days, 
find at least three positive things that happen to us every day. They could be as simple as waking up, making it safely to work, and being lucky enough to have a job. Because you cannot rewind one year, one day, one hour, or one second of this life. Today is it a day to rejoice with happiness and celebrate our achievement. We should all be extremely proud of ourselves. Something I found myself often doing is attempting to live my life in stages. I have said for the longest time, I'm gonna be happy when I graduate, or I'm gonna be happy when I buy a house, or when I have kids, or when I get married. I caught, caught living my life in pieces or stages, and waiting for the completion of a stage before experiencing happiness. I urge all of us to learn from the past, keep tomorrow in mind, and prepare for the future, but to live in the present. If we constantly tell ourselves, I'll be happy when blank happens, we're gonna find ourselves in a perpetual state of waiting and malaise. Enjoy today for the little things. Appreciate the bird singer, the blessing of waking up in the morning. Apply for that job. Take the chance with a new opportunity that you might not be comfortable with. The late Heath Ledger once said, everyone you meet always asks if you have a career or if you're married or if you own a house, as if life was some sort of grocery list. But no one ever asks if you're truly happy. The want and need for acceptance can make you invisible in this life. Do not let anything stop you from being the person that you are. Risk being seen in all of your wonder and all of your glory. So many people say life happens to you, but my challenge to each of us in this room is to make life happen for you. We ask the universe to hand us what we desire. It may give it to us, it may not. Nevertheless, we will receive what we demand with our everyday actions. There'll be sightless alleys, jobs that crush our spirit, nights that drain us, wake up calls that come entirely too early, and crossroads with no discernible directional signs. Each one of these moments will lead to their own moment of transcendence when we realize it was all worth it and we become transformed by that experience. I stumbled upon a story recently and the title is, I dreamt I had an interview with God. It starts by someone asking God, what surprises you most about mankind? God answers, that they get bored of being children, are in a rush to grow up, and then long to be children again. That they lose their health to make money, and then lose their money to restore their health. That by thinking anxiously about the future, they forget the present, such that they live neither for the present nor the future. The author of the story is unknown, but it truly resonated with me. I'm moving on to an online college after HCC, and now I'm realizing that I not appreciate the little things that made HCC so special to me, like the convenient commute from work to HCC's campus, or the personal connections with classmates that I made, and the ability to walk into a professor's office and ask questions if I had them. I'll never get to have those experiences again here, and I wish I would have slowed down and savored those moments just a little bit more. Something else that has resonated with me throughout my life is that no matter what happens today or how bad today seems, that life goes on and tomorrow will be better. I have learned that making a living is not the same thing as making a life. I have learned that whenever I decide something with an open heart, it usually proves to have been the right decision. I have learned that everything eventually ends, love, youth, and that's what makes every moment in life so valuable. As we get older, we'll realize that no one has all the answers. It turns out that life is a need. It turns out that life is an exercise in living with the certainty of uncertainty. Life is unpredictable. Not everything is in our control. But if we are with the right people, we can handle anything. So we need to live our lives without regrets. It goes by in the blink of an eye. On the final episode of my favorite TV show, The Office, Andy Bernard says, I wish there was someone to tell you that you're in the good old days before you've already left them. You're in the good old days now. Start living like it. Seize the day, be successful, and live your life on your own terms, and sit back and enjoy the ride. And so class of 2018, I'll leave you with this. Remember the solid foundation that you built for yourselves here at Hartford Community College. Push forward with your life and use those tools to achieve groundbreaking innovations. Stand up for what is right, make sacrifices, care about your neighbors, and one day it'll all just click. My hope is that we will realize what is important and what we truly value. We will learn to care less about what other people think and more about what we think of ourselves. My hope is that we will realize how far we've come and we will remember when we thought things were such a mess that we would never recover. And we'll smile. We'll smile because we are truly proud of the people that we have fought to become. Most importantly, I want everyone in this room to be able to create meaningful, purposeful, fulfilling lives for yourselves and learn how to use that to make an impact and a difference in the lives of others. You only have so many days in this life. 
Don't waste a single one living someone else's. Thank you all very much, and Godspeed.